Hello, and welcome to this week's live weekly warm up. I'm all dressed up and fancy for the occasion today. It's actually because I am recording a video with my read quintet or for my read quintet um, right after this. So I'm dressed up for that. But hey, I look all fancy for the live weekly warm up too. So today, um, this is actually a fun one because Pretty much every week I uh, ask my wife what I should do for the, for the live weekly warm up, but she only played clarinet through high school and never took lessons or, or really did anything too serious with it. So she doesn't really know a whole bunch of warm up exercises. So normally she doesn't give me an answer that's all that helpful. But this week she said you should do something about dynamics. And I thought about it and I haven't done something related to dynamics in a really, really long time. So I thought today would be a perfect time to talk about dynamics and remind you all to do some dynamics in your playing. I think it's a really good point too, because it's been a long time since we've really played with other people in person. And when we're playing in person, especially in a band or, or any other ensemble, that's where we're really forced to do our dynamics. For example, if it's a section and you have 12 clarinetists in your band or something like that, and the clarinet part's not really important, then you should probably play very, very soft because there's 12 people playing a not so important part. And it might even be okay to not play at times to make it work well and, and be the right balance for the whole group. On the other hand, with bands even more so, there's oftentimes really loud brass and percussion parts and you're wiggling your fingers and showing off all your hard work and you really wanna play as loud as you possibly can to try to, to get that heard through, through the whole group. So I think that this is um, a perfect example of something that we haven't been thinking about a lot lately and something that we should keep thinking about. Um, Colleen's asking if she can use this on the short music studies um, from the next generation clarinet method. And I think, yes, absolutely. Um, basically what we're going to be doing today is just practicing extreme dynamics. So I'm going to do it on a scale because I also haven't done much technique exercises on a live warm up in, in a while. So I'm just gonna do a simple C major two octave scale. But the thing that's gonna make it a really beneficial exercise or and a sort of new exercise is that I'm gonna do it as soft as I can and then as loud as I can. And as you're doing this, it's really important to still go for the very best quality, even at these extreme dynamics. We're so used to playing mezzo forte, mezzo piano, and, and sort of living in this nice comfy middle ground. So the point today is to, to reach for those extremes, sort of push your boundaries, because the better control you can have over those extremes, then the more professional you'll sound when you're playing anything. So let's give it a try, uh, and then we'll talk about a few other tips with it. Um, and I'll send you on your way for the week. So P, pianissimo, super, super soft first, and then really loud next. And loud. And who knows how that comes across over the internet. Hopefully you could hear a contrast between those two and see how that's really different volumes than you're probably used to practicing because you probably do pretty much everything that you do in that sort of middle ground. So I just did it to demonstrate on scales, but you can also do this on any other kind of warm up. Do your articulation soft, do your long tones loud, mix it up, always be thinking about these extreme dynamics and, and don't forget about the extreme dynamics. Maybe not every single time you do anything, it has to be at the furthest extreme, but make sure that you're remembering to, to do those every now and then and not just getting stuck in the rut of, ah, everything's mezzo forte. I'm not gonna disturb my neighbors. I'm not gonna put in too much effort to playing soft. Do challenge yourself and, and go for those extremes. A couple of things to be listening for as you're, you're going for these extreme dynamics are sound quality. It's very easy to confuse a soft sound with a bad quality sound, something like this. Where it's really unsupported and just really, really weak. Make sure that there's still presence in your pianissimo sound. And then on the opposite side, make sure that your forte isn't too spread or blatty. 
it's really easy when we go for both extremes for the sound quality to diminish. So that's the first most important thing as you're practicing these extreme dynamics is keeping the sound quality that you want and getting the sound quality that you want. The second thing is just the general intonation. Hopefully you know that our tendency, the instrument's tendency when we play softer is for the pitch to go sharper and when we play louder for the pitch to go lower. So make sure that you're compensating for that accordingly and not going so extreme that the sound quality and the pitch changes, but seeing how far you can push that extreme before those things change. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that you give this a try and remember to do some of your exercises at these extreme dynamics, whether it's even an etude or a short music study like Colleen mentioned, where there are dynamics in there. There's piano to forte dynamics. So really go for true piano to true forte and make it sound good on both ends of those extremes. So happy practicing with this this week. And I look forward to seeing you in the next live weekly warm up.